Welcome to another great episode of Beacons of Light. And joining me today is Kelly Ellisor, the Chief Pharmacist at the St. Vincent de Paul Community Pharmacy. Welcome to the show, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me, Michael. Well, when did you start at our pharmacy? Um, well, I started in September of 2019, and I've been here for about a year and a half. So you started in September 2019, and it's a different environment than you're used to working in, isn't it? Oh, yes. Um, I've done retail setting. I've done home infusion, um, and it's definitely different. We have uh, it's a lot different as far as the insurance and everything mm -hmm. that goes, the cost. And what I love so much about what we do is that our patients don't have to pay for anything. We are able to supply medication for them that they need and without them having to at any cost. So how does that tie in with your faith that you know you're responding to need, there's somebody that shows up the door and at St. Vincent de Paul, as you know, we're called to see the face of Christ and everyone we serve. So how has that impacted you in your faith life? Well, it's such a wonderful place to be, uh, to be honest. God has led me to this path and um, working in other settings, you, you know, you, you don't get to know the patients as well as you do mm -hmm. here at St. Vincent de Paul. When they mm -hmm. walk through the door, they're our family. We're here to take, take, take care of them. Um, you know, they'll come in, how's my sister doing? How's, how, you know, how's my, um, my, you know, brother doing? You know, that's how we talk. I mean, yep. we're family. Right. So as far as um, my faith life with St. Vincent and Paul Community mm -hmm. Pharmacy, it's, it's an open door. We, yeah. we love taking care of our patients and it's just been absolutely wonderful. So for you, you're a graduate of St. Joseph Academy. I am, yes. And so... It, you know, it, for you, high school is not that long ago. For me, it's <laughs> forever ago. But, but uh, I'm a graduate of Catholic High, and I know when I entered and started working at St. Vincent de Paul, even younger than you are, at 22 years old, I, you know, really connected with it because the Brothers of the Sacred Heart really kind of instilled in us hey, this is a great opportunity, and it's an opportunity to open your eyes and to serve God in a remarkable way. Did that same thing impact you? Oh, absolutely. Um, I feel like I had prayed to God that I needed to have something in my life that I felt I was really doing more for the community. <laughs> and not only did he lead me to the path of being a pharmacist, but then he led me here to St. Vincent to Paul to open up the doors and just welcome all these people and help them with their medication. So it's been wonderful. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have people out there just they're praying for a miracle and then yes. here the miracle happens. Yes. And so you see that in the eyes of the patients. Any touching stories that come that you remember? Don't obviously for uh, confidentiality, don't mention any names. I know you wouldn't do that, but <laughs> um, any special stories? I know for me, when I see people that are disabled that come into the pharmacy or who are homeless, mm -hmm. it's just heartbreaking. It is, it is. And what we've also been able to help out with is a lot of our patients don't have even the funds to be able to pay for simple things as, you know, soap and shampoo and conditioner. So, you know, as far as us trying to keep them healthy with their medication, we also give them these other items to help them stay healthy, stay clean, be able to bathe themselves, brush their teeth, things like that. So when they come through our pharmacy, we try to take care with care of them as best we can whenever and so when they leave, they feel um, enlightened and mm -hmm. you know just so blessed that they were able to walk into our doors and that's what we really want to portray. And that's what is our mission there at the pharmacy to just kind of yes serve the whole patient, right? Absolutely, yes. We want, we want to take care of them just like they are a member of our family because that's what we feel like when they walk through our doors. We're here to take care of you as if you were one of our family members. And, you know, prior to March 2020, yeah. you had a lot of volunteers in the pharmacy, right? I did. <laughs> and how was that interplay? And how did you see, and how did it help you grow spiritually to see men, women, doctors, Yes. You know, like Dr. Schwarzenberg, yes. I saw him there yeah, last he was, week. Yeah, he, well, he was and, there today, actually. Yeah, and he was there. I, it was, you know, so talk about, you know, these remarkable men and women that come and give of their time. Oh, absolutely. It is, 
so astounding. We have, um, before the pandemic, we probably had about 20 volunteers that would come in and out. And gradually we're getting back to that point again um, with the pandemic kind of um, getting into phase three. But um, during the pandemic, it was a lot harder because mm -hmm. our volunteers didn't really come in. You know, everybody was kind of staying home. We wanted to stay open and do the best that we could. So we took extra precautions just to be helpful for the volunteers. But it has been so rewarding because these men and women that come in here, it's, it's amazing and they're dedicated and they come every week and you know I'm there Monday you know they're there Monday Wednesday Friday or they're there Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday I mean it's it's amazing it's 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 remarkable how um, much God has inspired them to give back so and, it's and, wonderful and, and it is it's I know that uh, when I go over there whether it's uh, Dr. Schwarzenberg or <laughs> Sister Joan Laplace or yes. Anybody that's coming in, volunteering of their time and talent, it's uplifting to see the difference that we're making one person at a time. So, so I guess um, you talked about the pandemic, and when we go to the next segment, we'll talk a little bit more in depth on that, but prior to the pandemic, anything that really hits you as, hey, this is kind of different, and I really love it, here at St. Vincent because of that? Oh, um, there's so many things that I love. Uh, not only do we have more time with our patients and we're able to give them the, the care that I feel like we, that they deserve. Yes. You know, um, when you go to a retail pharmacy, not any in particular, just the mm -hmm. setting's a little bit different because it's it's fast paced. You're you know you're you're more you have to meet a certain number or quota, right. whereas this, you walk in and we're here to help you. So I mean, if if there's a lot of stuff that we got to help you with, we're there. We and we can have time. We have our time to be able to help you. So right. it's it's just wonderful. Does that help with patient compliance? You know, do I take the red pill, the blue pill, the orange pill, and Absolutely. and when do I do that in the day? Does that help you kind of help? Absolutely. And we we actually do have um, we have a couple different people that come in once a week and actually we fill their pill trays for them. Really? Um, yes, we have a patient we call Mr. President. So no <laughs> names, but <laughs> Mr. President, and uh, he calls himself President Obama. Yeah. But uh, he comes in and we. We do his medication every week, and um, you know he's very compliant because we have started helping him in that aspect as well. So, it's, it's it's, for those crazy. patients that need that extra care, I mean, you're literally saving their lives, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, we feel like that anyway. <laughs> well, well, you know so. I mean, because. Yeah. When we come back, we'll talk about the medicine, the heart medication, the high blood, blood pressure medication, the diabetic medication, all of the various things that our pharmacy helps with people who are truly in need. And we'll start the second segment in a minute where we'll talk about that pandemic. You start a job in September of 2019 <laughs> and then March 2020 rolls around and things totally change. We'll come back and talk about that change and how St. Vincent de Paul followed Christ's call even in the most difficult of times during a worldwide pandemic. My Bicycle Journey, a book that tells a story, it educates, it promotes, and it also provides some leadership. Take the time to purchase this book and St. Vincent de Paul benefits from all of the proceeds of this book. Please, if you would, give St. Vincent de Paul a call and let me know what you think of my bicycle journey. We have officially started our engine for the next segment with Ms. Kelly LSR, our pharmacist at the St. Vincent de Paul Community Pharmacy. And we talked in the last segment about you starting right before the pandemic, and then we talked about then the pandemic hits. And I know for me, I was really kind of scared and fearful, still am a little bit. <laughs> How did it impact you? Well, at the time when the pandemic hit, I was actually pregnant. So um, it was a lot of unknown, mm -hmm. but I feel like when I got to the pharmacy every day, I felt well protected. Um, 
you know, uh, my pharmacy director, Ms. Kay Kyes, she did a great job of, you know, making sure that we were all safe, mask, the plexiglass up on the pharmacy counter, so that way, you know, protect us against the patients. Um, and also uh, face shields, because uh, a, lot, a lot of the time whenever we first started with the pandemic and right. instead of having people come in, we would go right. to their vehicles and so make them feel safe, us mm -hmm. feel safe. That's just kind of how we handled the prescription process for mm -hmm. the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so you, we get an A plus at St. Vincent for what I, we did, I agree. you think, yes, right? Yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm still here today. That's right. Everything's going great. You yeah, know, we it, have a beautiful baby girl, so everything's been wonderful. Yeah, and it, it was it, it was kind of, I think, scary for the patients, too. I mean. Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, still some of our patients, instead of coming in, they'll, right. they'll make they'll make a phone call and we'll just go walk out to their vehicle right. and wear the face shield and um, try to be as safe as possible to make them feel comfortable. And that's important because everybody that we were serving, they had an underlying health condition. Absolutely. Diabetes, high blood pressure. They were super scared yes. and rightfully so because they knew if they caught COVID, it could be something that might not turn out very well. And so whether you delivered them by hand or uh, out to the car or they came in, you know, we reduced the size of our waiting area. We, you know, um, I think yes. it comforted them, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Um, our patients actually, I feel at first, since everybody was unknown, um, they were kind of scared to come in. But then when they would call us and we would reiterate that, you know, we will do whatever will make you feel comfortable. If you want us to go outside, we'll go outside. If you, if you want to come in, you can come in. Um, you know, we'll all be wearing masks. There's a glass, uh, you know, uh, the place of glass up at the front, up at the pharmacy counter. So that way, and we only had maybe six chairs in there and also a wall right. um, in between to kind of spread everybody out to make everybody feel comfortable. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I, I'm sure I, on most days, you probably prior to the pandemic, um, you heard thank you and gratitude and appreciation for what we do. But my guess is after March 20th, <laughs> they were really like super thankful, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, the fact that we were able to stay open and help them get the medication they needed, keep them protected at the same time, so that way they can hopefully decrease their chances of getting COVID by right. keeping up with their medication. And if they get it, if they're on their medication, they're going to have a better health come, Absolutely. outcome. And Absolutely. without that uh, medication, then, you know, and, and that's what we see. People, I mean, our pharmacy is one of a last resort. And so when you see people, do you see sometimes that desperation and that relief from that desperation when you hand them a medicine? Yes. We actually have, you know, had patients walk in and um, just so distraught, just not sure of, what we really can help them with, what, what, if they're able to get their medication. So when they walk through our doors, um, most, I mean, I would say most patients, if not all of them, walk out with their he head held high because they know yes. that they were able to get the help they needed. Right, and, and that's what is so important. Not only, I mean, in a way, you know, we're trying to nourish the body with great medicine and things that the doctors are saying they need, but we want to nourish the soul as well, right? Absolutely, yes. We, yeah. um, you know, it's it's amazing because I mean we've had we've had people come in mm -hmm. um, even with I know we had the pandemic and then we also had all the hurricanes and we've had patients that just come in and you can just tell that they're just lost like what right. what what can I do what, what right. do I need to do right. and so just the fact that we're able to kind of pick them up a little bit every time and get them the care that they need and you know if oh I'm relocated I don't have access to a doctor well right. we have we have someone that we can call that you know could possibly help them out oh I need some dental care right. well we have a dental office right in our pharmacy as well so it's just wonderful that they have extra access you know that we have the extra access to help them get what they need what would your message be to anybody out there that might know somebody that doesn't have health insurance they're not Medicaid expansion eligible. So 
they really need to get a uh, prescription filled, but they just don't have access to it. What would your message be? Well, I mean, I, if, if I was you, I would come and see us because there's definitely different situations. Right. Everybody has a different situation. And, you know, when you walk through our doors, more than likely we're going to help you. Right. If not one time, probably more. Most likely more. Right. Um, because we understand when you get, you know, it's even we have a patient actually, and even with the stimulus checks, mm -hmm. she still couldn't make ends meet with her bills. So then you think about that, she's right. already using her stimulus money on her bills for right. to live, to right. buy her car. Right. But what's she going to do about her medication? Right. So she can come to us and we can help her at least with that aspect. Right. Um, you know, so it's, it's, been wonderful. Yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful and great. That's what, those are two of my favorite words. Yeah, I've been saying it the Paul. whole time. There you go. It is. It, it, and, and, you know, just to think of all the generous people that make the pharmacy a reality. Absolutely. You know, the support from Pat Shingleton yes. and WBRZ, and that just terrific? Oh, it's, it's wonderful. And uh, he's a delight when he comes to the pharmacy. <laughs> he yeah, is. He gets yes. everybody smiling. <laughs> he's been on the show before, and uh, we'll have to have him back now. <laughs> that he's retired, but it's uh, it, it's just a remarkable thing to see so many people getting behind because the me you know we just we don't manufacture the medicines we have to buy them and those dollars are critical aren't they? Absolutely yes. I mean, when the pandemic hit, we actually had kind of stopped the donations because we weren't sure what to expect. But um, now we have taken extra precaution that you know when. We're able to take donations again, and when you come in, we have a little station, you know, we spray everything off, so that way when it gets to our other patients, if there was, you know, family member that passed away due to COVID, that their stuff is sanitized and able to be reused. Right. And, and everything's sealed. Right. Everything yes. has to be manufacturer sealed yes. so for us to accept it. Right. And Kelly was talking about, you know, the actual prescription medication donations. And we did have to suspend that. But I promise you, we never suspend taking dollars, right? <laughs> right, you know? yes. So dollars that come in that allow us to buy, buy. new stock, we always keep those going. And so the message from Kelly would be that if you have medications that are still sealed, we can take them, we can look at them, she can. You can't give them to me, you can't give them to another <laughs> volunteer. You actually have to come to the pharmacy and that would be Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 12.30 and uh, Kelly can take a look at them. If we can put them to good use, we will, won't we? Oh, absolutely. And with the pandemic as well, you think about, you know, we weren't getting all the the actual medication donations, so even a financial donation would be very helpful in us ordering the medication for the patient. And it all counts. Whether it's medicine, volunteer hours, it all goes to a great mission at St. Vincent de Paul. And when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about our mission and how the pharmacy is really making a difference in our local diocese. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul's first cookbook, Taste and See, is the gift which helps share the goodness of the Lord with those most in need. Featuring recipes from Chef John Foles, each chapter begins with a short story about one of our special work programs. To order your copy of Taste and See, please call the Society or visit our website. Help multiply blessings for the neediest in our community. We're finishing up a great show of Beacons of Light with Kelly Ellisar. We're talking about the St. Vincent de Paul Community Pharmacy and all the difference it makes in our local community, uh, filling prescriptions that are full of life and love and compassion and hope. Now, Kelly, people want to get involved. They can go to svdpbr.org and they can sign up to volunteer. They can come see you, see Miss Kay, there's everything from screening to working behind the pharmacy with you. Mm -hmm. Would you encourage people to do that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, with the donations that we get, we sometimes get big donations at one time. So the more people back there to help us kind of sift through everything, or even sometimes we have, you know, um, I mean, since the pandemic, it hasn't been as many at a time because we limit our waiting room. But 
just to be able to get the patients in and out more quickly, you know, the more volunteers we have to screen would also be a big help for us as well. And we can always use a help. And, oh, and yes. I know with COVID, we've been under a lot of stress relative to that. And it's kept everybody safe. So, yeah. it, you know, if I had a, a desire to go either safe or play a little risky, I'd rather go safe. And that's what we've done. Oh, and, yeah. And we have the curtains up in the screen, screening right. rooms and the glass shields. So that way the screeners feel safe behind right. you know, the glass and the patients feel safe. Everybody has a mask on and, you know, it's right. just more safe. And you hit a good point. You know, a lot of people don't realize we go through a screening process. We're not filling prescriptions that people could go and buy in the store or they could get it free through a government program yes. or some other program. This is a pharmacy of absolute last resort. And that's why I think the volunteers are dedicated. And I know you've seen inspirational things. Oh, absolutely. Uh, volunteers, share a story or two. Well, we have... Um it's just amazing because we have volunteers that come in regularly and um, some of them have disabilities, some of them don't, but they're there every single day and it's such, it's such an inspiring thing because, you know, when you retire, you, you have plenty of stuff to do, you know, um, or if you, you know, want to stay at home, but instead they're here giving up their time following, you know, God's call and here helping out. It, it's amazing, isn't it? It is. It's and, so amazing. And they're better than any, I mean, they, you know, you as a staff member, as I am, we're committed to our mission. We love it. Yes. It's not about the paycheck. It's about yes. making a difference. Right. The volunteers, I mean, they're there because their paycheck is in heaven, and I, you know, it, it's they are just committed beyond belief. There's okay. not enough money in the world to pay them to no. do anything else. I know we we had a pharmacist um, who hasn't been back since the pandemic, but he would say every day that his paycheck was trying to go to heaven. So he said, "I work for God." Every yep. day he'd walk in and say, "I work for God," and right. that's also so inspiring because. We all work for God. That's we're it. We're here. We're disciples That's it. of Jesus. So yeah. we're here to help God's mission and to reach out to those that need help. And if we didn't do it, who would? You know, exactly. And that's what's so very important. Exactly. And so with that, um, I've been asking you all kinds of questions. <laughs> so uh, what question do you want to ask me as uh, a fellow colleague at St. Vincent de Paul? <laughs> well, Michael, you've been doing this a long time. As far as your career go has gone, what has been something that you will never forget? Well, there are so many because <laughs> uh, I've been uh, at St. Vincent de Paul as, as long as you've been alive. So <laughs> that shows a little bit of experience. So lots of in stories that, I, I mean, it's just everything is priceless. I mean, I, I think of you know, grown men coming in that are homeless and they're so distraught that they, uh, they're they crying, you know. And when you look up at them, well, I look at, up at most everybody, <laughs> um, but when you look up at a grown man and they're crying, you just think, wow, you know, uh, they're so thankful. And you talked earlier about having hope, to, you know, being instilled in somebody and the, the weight on the shoulders being relieved. And, yes. I mean, that is just such a powerful experience. I mean, I remember there was a homeless guest, and there's so many stories I could tell you, and I'm not <laughs> gonna tell you his name, but he came up to me and he let me know how touching it was. Um, and later on, the volunteer, unbeknownst to one another, shared the same story. There's a church group, St. Thomas More, Many of them, as you know, bring meals to the shelters. Yeah. And we fill those prescriptions, don't we, at the shelters? Yes. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of prescriptions yes. we fill for people that are truly in need. And this uh, lady uh, was asked by fellow parishioners to come and bring a meal with them to St. Vincent Ball. She was a little leery. She was kind of concerned and scared about the homeless. And um, finally, they talked her into it, and they said, part of the deal is you bring a dish or a dessert. So she says, well, I can make enough apple pie for everybody. And she had her little secret ingredient. <laughs> she was a grandmother. <laughs> so she made her apple pie that was really, really great, and she served it. 
And this gentleman both expressed to me as well as to her, broke her down, uh, that she made the pie just like his grandmother did too. Wow. And it touched his heart and his, he was just very teary-eyed. That lady continued to volunteer until she passed away. So, I mean, those are the kinds of things that you never forget. Yeah. And over a 30-year run, you know, you, you learn those things. And I know you've, you're in year one, two. So, <laughs> so, so, but you probably kind of you relate to that, don't you? Oh, absolutely. We, I mean, I'm thinking of a person right now. He, uh, he has been struggling big time and he came in one day and we just knew something wasn't right with him and he just kind of told us like you know I'm really I'm really down I'm and usually he's super happy super you know thankful to be here and be alive and he was just really really down so you know we sat down and talked with him and you know what's going on you know how can we help you and um, when he left he said Thank y'all so much. He said, I'm so sorry that I came in that way, but I really needed y'all today. And he said, God told me I needed to come and get my medicine today and come and talk with my family. And that is just, that is why I love my job. That's why I love, I love helping the people we help because it really makes a difference in their life. It does. And when you think of people that uh, don't have a lot of job satisfaction and they hate going to work, <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's what makes it fun. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Because, you know, um, we are really, our impact is in each person we're blessed to serve. Absolutely. Yes. Well, that's our call at St. Vincent de Paul to seek and find the forgotten, the suffering of their deprived. And Kelly and crew at the pharmacy, they do a great job of that. And we encourage you to get involved with us. Go to svdpbr.org and see how you can support us. You can support us through financial ways, through volunteer ways, and you can also pray for those we are blessed to serve. Pray for the volunteers, some of which are in their 70s, they're coming, they have been vaccinated, but you know, the vaccination isn't 100%. Uh, they're taking risks, making a difference because they believe in our cause. And on behalf of everyone we serve, we thank each and every one of you for your support. And we'll see you again next week on Beacons of Life.